Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I'm looking at a brand new and very highly anticipated product from Hornby. <laughs> Today's train pack has been talked about a lot. It's been quite controversial, of course, but finally it has arrived. And here it is. It is the Liverpool and Manchester Lion train pack. And by all accounts, this model sort of just appeared in stock. We didn't know it was coming. Hornby didn't post about it. They didn't post any sample images beforehand. We've heard no updates on the project. Literally, it has just arrived in stock, and I don't really know why. Um, are they trying to sneak this out secretly in light of the competition? Are they trying to keep it on the low down uh, because of all the controversy? I don't know, but here it is, it has arrived. On Hornby.com, the RRP is very steep. This pack costs £239.99. And that, of course, includes the Lion, which is the focus of the pack. That is the only item in here that hasn't been released before, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what that's like. And it also consists of three coaches, but those models we have actually seen before. Now, on Hornby.com, you can buy a pack of three coaches for £89.99. So if we deduct that from the price of this train pack, then we can find out what the locomotive costs, and that is £150, which does seem quite a lot, given how small this thing is going to be. But then again, I have no idea of what sort of features this model has, because, like I say, Hornby have not mentioned anything about it up to now. So, I'm really looking forward to seeing what this is like. Taking into account the fact that this is a Hornby product, it has arrived in stock in quite a timely fashion. I assume this has been given priority to get it out ahead of the competition. And of course, it's been quite a rocky journey to get this product out because the original version of this pack was the Titfield pack. But of course, they had to cancel that pack because they pinched the property and they didn't have a license for it. But anyway, that's all in the past. Let's take a look at this, the brand new Liverpool and Manchester Lion train pack from Hornby. So the packaging is unique for this anyway. It is a wider box than the Stevenson's Rocket packs. Presumably that's to accommodate the extra length of the Lion locomotive. You can see on the front that this is a centenary celebration pack, which is a little bit confusing because the centenary of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway took place in 1930. And yet this train pack is marketed as an Era 1 train pack, which is obviously way before 1930. 1930 is Era 3 or something like that. And according to the people that have received the Lion model already, it doesn't represent an Era 1 locomotive in terms of the livery and detail, nor does it really represent Lion in 1930. Apparently this has got some details from the 1950s and the 1980s on it. So from what I've heard, this model is a little bit on the sloppy side, possibly because this was rushed. I don't know whether that's the truth or not, but maybe it was. But obviously I am going to make up my own mind about this, as I would encourage you to do as well. And as you know, I tend to focus more on the quality and the build and the features of models rather than the absolute realism. So with that, let's open up this little sleeve. And <laughs> the big reveal still hasn't happened because the loco is wrapped in plastic. So we'll have to wait a second or two longer to get a look at that. First though, let me draw your attention to this image. I suppose that's the lion that this model is supposed to represent. So bear that in mind for later on. And then down below, you've got a little bit of history on lion and the other bits and pieces in the pack. So I think then it's time to open up the box and see what we get. So I'm gonna open it at the top here and it looks like it's the same sort of foam insert that we saw with Stevenson's Rocket. But first, I felt some paperwork on the back, which I'm very, very eager to look at because this might give away some specs of the locomotive. So Liverpool and Manchester Lion, let's have a look. So lubrication, yep, yeah, shows us where to lubricate, but there's nothing too revealing there. Accessories, ah, it looks like maybe do we get some crew then? Looks like there are a couple of figures to fit. That's a nice inclusion. Close coupling, uh, okay, that's a nice option as well for such a small loco. 
coal insert, presumably removable coal load then, that's cool. And DCC decoder installation, this is what interests me. It looks as though the decoder goes inside the loco, not the tender. So that's interesting. And on the back, no more diagrams. Okay, so let's have a look then. How do we get in here? So it is, it is the foam insert, which is a little bit concerning because at least with Rocket, you had to wrestle the models out of it and that was a bit scary. I should say that this box um, came in bubble wrap and an outer cardboard sleeve. And then the retailer, the model center, added a load of uh, bubble wrap and extra packaging as well. So reasonably well packaged. We've got three accessories packs here. So let's see what we've got here. The first one is a lone fireman. Uh, nicely painted, actually. Yeah, that's a good quality figure. I'm not quite sure what he's done to deserve being packed up on his own like that, but he did it, whatever it was. Uh, the middle pack is, as you'd probably expect, the driver. Looks like he's either a wizard casting a spell or perhaps slightly more likely operating the controls of the locomotive. So you can fit those if you want to. And then I'm guessing this is going to be couplings in the final accessories bag. <laughs> and indeed it is. And yes, this appears to use the same coupling system as Stevenson's rocket used. Although this time there are only three couplings here. So there's no choice of the length of the chain this time. And obviously if you want to add more rolling stock, you'll have to use the chains from the other packs. Hopefully the coach packs come with more than three, otherwise you'll be scuppered, won't you? Anyway, let's have a look then. What shall we do first? I think we will start with the locomotive because I am really interested to see what this is like. So can I push this out at the back? Oh, I don't like this. This is a 150 pound model that I'm having to wrestle out of a foam enclosure. I can now grab the plastic and I, I assume the loco and tender are connected together. All right. Okay, I've got it. And you know what? This thing actually looks really awesome. We'll have to take a much closer look at it in a moment, but there's a lot of cool stuff to see here. Now, confusingly, the loco body appears to be made of plastic, while the running plate and such is die cast. The loco weight seems okay, but the tender is noticeably very hefty as well, and that's because the body of it is die cast. So why they did that, I'm not too sure. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you really need a lot of weight in the tender. Maybe they're unstable or something. I don't think they would be though. But yeah, the tender has a die cast body, which is strange. The loco itself has a very interesting wood textured effect to the boiler and the firebox as well. And I have to say, it looks reasonably effective, doesn't it? Yeah, that's not a bad finish at all there. The firebox has a decent finish as well. That is actually quite metallic. It's not electroplated, I don't think, but there's a really good sheen to that. It doesn't just look like cheap paint, which is good. Yeah, there's a lot that stands out here, and we'll take a much closer look at this in just a moment. Uh, yeah, it feels, it feels okay. It doesn't feel dreadfully heavy or anything, and it is a pity that more of the loco isn't made of metal, but it's got to be a better puller than Stevenson's rocket, hasn't it? Although that's not saying a great deal. Okay, let's start looking at some of the coaches then. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail on the coaches today. I will show them up close briefly, but if you'd like to know more about them, I will include a link to my Stevenson's Rocket Pack review, where I went into quite a bit more detail. But here we've got one of the coaches, and this one is Experience. I'm not sure if this particular one, Experience, has been produced before, but clearly this is the same model, with the possible exception then of the name that we've seen before. Yeah, quite nice models, very lightweight, designed for Stevenson's rocket to haul them, which was not a great puller, so hopefully Lion should have no trouble hauling three of these, possibly quite a bit more. All right, let's just have a look at the name of the second coach. This one is Traveller, and yeah, that doesn't ring a bell, so this might be new to me, whether or not Hornby have produced Traveller before, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, nice coaches. They are cool looking. And then we've got the third class, I think it's third, isn't it? Yeah. Or second class, I can't remember now. And this one's a very tight fit. And this one I have looked at before, of course. Again, I've got reviews of this. And this does not have a name, I guess. The, uh, the lower class people don't deserve a name on their coaches, I'm not sure. Or indeed a roof, yes. But yeah, interesting, nice bit of variation in the train pack. So, 
I think what we're all interested in is Lion. So let's have a little bit of history on Lion in real life, and then we'll take a much closer look at this model from Hornby. The LMR number 57 Lion was introduced way back in 1838, some nine years after the introduction of Stevenson's rocket. Built by Todd Kitson and Laird, this engine represented a considerable development over the likes of the rocket, now featuring two inside cylinders, originally much larger 11 by 20 inch ones, which propelled the engine to a maximum speed of 40 miles per hour. It had double the number of driving wheels, producing around three times the tractive effort at 9.6 kilonewtons. The Lion was one of six locomotives ordered from the locomotive builders at the time, and she was accompanied by a number of brothers and sisters. Tiger was one of them, and uh, Lion and Tiger were both used for working goods trains. The locomotive was modified in 1841 with a better boiler and two new cylinders, and to accommodate these new parts, the frame of the loco was lengthened, making this rebuild a considerable change to the original design. Eventually, Lion was sold quite cheaply, and she ended up working as a pumping engine at the Graving Dock facility until 1923 when she was rediscovered, rescued and restored. Lion still exists today under preservation, and visually, I think she is in top condition. So, there she is, up close and personal for you, the Hornby Lion. And I've got to be honest, I think this thing is tremendous. Just like the last new Hornby Loco I looked at, the 9F, the quality and the detail of this model is so much higher than we've seen from Hornby in the past. It really is wonderful. I suppose I was expecting this to be a slightly rushed loco, given what's been happening with the project behind the scenes, but really that doesn't seem to be the case in terms of the level of detail and the quality and the features. It's absolutely awesome. Now, I don't massively care about the absolute accuracy of the models I review, and this is not normally a focus of my reviews. However, I have been reading about this model online, and there are one or two issues, apparently, with how accurate it is. So again, on Hornby.com, this is claimed to be an Era 1 locomotive, although supposedly the livery we see here is a 1930s livery. But for me, that is in line with the fact that this is a centenary train pack, I just think Hornby's desire to market this as an Era 1 locomotive has trumped their desire for accuracy. So I, I assume that's not just ignorance, I assume that they've done that on purpose. So not quite correct, fair enough. Apparently the air brake handle on the tender is from the 1980s, so that's probably a bit of a slip up, isn't it? And also the pressure gauge here, apparently this was added in 1952 for the Titfield Thunderbolt film. We know that this model from Hornby was originally intended to go in a Titfield Thunderbolt train pack. They were wrong to do that because they didn't have the rights, but perhaps by the time they realised that that was the case, it was too late to go back, and so the pressure gauge appears. But I think these things are relatively minor next to what is an absolutely awesome looking model. So, let's start and look at the decoration. We do have this wood effect on the boiler and the side of the firebox, and I think that looks quite good. It is quite a bright colour, isn't it? And certainly on Hornby.com, some of the images look very, very high in saturation and very garish looking. In person, though, I don't think the model looks that bad. I think it looks a lot better here under my lights on my camera. No, I don't think it looks quite as saturated. The amazing thing for me is the banding on the boiler. Now, this does not look like a painted effect to me, folks. These bands, they look separately fitted, at least the ones in the centre do. The ones on the ends have a slightly different finish, so I think that's what we would expect to see if they were painted. These in the centre, they are separately fitted and real metal, if I had to guess. Yeah, that looks awesome. The Lion nameplate on there is a nice separately fitted part. Yeah, that looks good. And the finish on the firebox itself is great quality. Yeah, look at that. That's a lot better than I was expecting to see here. The slight issue with the decoration, I would say, is that the wheel colour does not match the splasher colour, or indeed the other green colour that we've got around the cab here. Yeah, I think that's quite unfortunate, but again, that was a lot more noticeable on some of the other images I've seen of this model. Here in person, I don't even know if I would have spotted that if I wasn't looking for it. But sure, yeah, it is noticeable if it catches your eye. 
Another magnificent quality feature would be the top of the chimney, which is made of real metal, and therefore the finish on this piece looks fantastic. Yeah, it's a really, really nice part. I love that. The splashes are separately fitted and separately lined, and as is the case everywhere else on the model, the precision of the decoration is top-notch. I absolutely can't fault it. Although the coupling rods here, they don't look great in my opinion. They look very fine and flimsy, so you're going to have to be careful not to knock them. That's okay, but uh, yeah, they look like painted plastic. Uh, they're not plastic, they are made of metal, but they don't have a real metallic finish to them, which is unfortunate. Anyway, let's move on and look at the level of detail. We'll start with the front buffer beam. So here we've got these sort of dumb buffer thingies. Uh, so obviously they're not going to be sprung, but they are separately fitted. Also separately fitted is this very realistic looking chain on the front, which is a real chain. I love that. You can also see the ends of the cylinders down underneath the front buffer beam. They've been nicely detailed. And the front of the smoke box door is also detailed up with a couple of separately fitted parts and a great level of molded detail. Yeah, the riveting and everything looks really good and crisp on the front there. Fantastic. The sides of the loco have these supports, which again, I think are separately fitted. They look great. And then you've got some sort of separately fitted valve on the side of the engine here. Again, a very, very finely molded part. The detail around the axles is really good to see on the loco and the non-driven axle has its axle box molded onto there, which is really cool. And check this out. If I lie the loco onto its side, you can see that we've got the motion modeled as well. What an amazing level of detail on such a small locomotive. How very impressive. The side of the cab has this awesome decorative metal effect, which has been recreated really, really nicely. And the cab detail itself is tremendous. We've got what looks like a real metal whistle on the top there. That looks great. And then I think these are going to be safety valves, aren't they? I think these are made of plastic, but they are nicely painted. And the cab detail is just awesome. Look at that. You've got the regulator handle, which is really fine, separately painted, really precise. And whether or not the gauge is supposed to be there, it's got all of the paintwork on it, and that looks great. The tender is a really nice piece of work. Because the tender body is die cast, which is a decision I don't really understand because obviously that will detract from the pulling power of the loco. For me, that tender is going to be perfectly stable because it's a four wheel tender. It could have been a little bit lighter. The decoration though is fantastic. You've got the lining around the main body there. The chassis and the underframe is also nicely decorated. It doesn't really match with the loco though. The color looks a little bit different, I would say. Maybe that's because the loco running plate is die cast and on the tender it's plastic. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, perhaps that would catch your eye. The interior of the tender is extremely detailed. There's a lot of riveting going on here. There are the little chains in the corners there. I think those are just part of the molding, but they look good. And then you've got other details such as the water filler cap there. The separately fitted coal load, which we've seen from the instructions, is removable. And the tender four plate, which is made of metal and it's flexible so that it can actually meet the loco. Around the back, you've got a separately fitted handrail, which I believe is made of metal. That's a nice quality inclusion. And then the buffer beam has the dumb buffers again. There's these little hooks dangling down. These are separately fitted. Yeah, very fine. And of course, no separately fitted chain here because you'll want to use the ones from the accessories bag so that you can couple this thing up to some rolling stock. In terms of loco weight, both loco and tender come in at 97 grams, so quite lightweight. Without the tender though, the loco is more like 66 grams, so not particularly heavy. I am surprised that more of this loco isn't made of metal. I've got to say though, all things considered, for around 150 pounds RRP, discounted slightly if you get it from a retailer, the value for money here is tremendous because the quality is so high. Don't mind paying a lot of money for locos if the quality is there, and I think it is here. And for all intents and purposes, the design seems to be a competent one. So visually speaking, I am incredibly impressed with this. It looks absolutely tremendous. In fact, I think it's one of my favorite locos in the collection already. However, what is the mechanism like and how does this perform? Well, let's find out. 
So there she is, the Hornby Lion down onto the track. And I really am so impressed with this. Doesn't it look fantastic? So anyway, the first performance test has already been filmed and I'm not gonna give you any spoilers about that for the moment. Next, I went to look at the mechanism. Now, normally I do like to fully disassemble locos in my review and show the mechanism, but Today, just like when I reviewed Stevenson's Rocket, I have decided not to because this is a very small and fragile loco and I just don't fancy disassembling it. Yes, because of the extreme level of fragile detail, but also because it's been very well designed so that really you shouldn't have to ever take this apart. So let me show you what I mean. First of all, in terms of pickups, the loco driving wheels have pickups fitted to them. The rear non-driven loco wheels don't, but all of the tender wheels do. So you've got four pickups per line. I think that is ample, if you ask me. The loco driving wheels have proper bearings fitted to them, as you can see, and you can even access these for lubrication without any disassembly, so that's really handy. And look at this, even the rear non-driven axle on the Loco has proper bearings on it. So that should seriously reduce drag on that axle. That is a real quality feature. Slightly less impressive is the exposed gearbox. Like Stevenson's Rocket, we do have exposed gears, unfortunately, which is going to mean that this Loco is more prone to picking up fluff and dust. So vacuuming your track before use is highly recommended on this one. The loco and tender are secured together, this time via a screwed drawbar. Stevenson's Rocket had an issue where the tender wasn't permanently coupled to the loco, which meant it could slip loose and strain the wires. Here we've got screws on both ends, so there's no danger of that. Notice also that we have four wires, not just two, as we'd need for the pickups, and that's because there is a pre-fitted speaker inside the tender. So no disassembly required for the tender either, the speaker is already there. Hornby.com does say that this loco runs a three-pole motor, not a five-pole motor, and that's strange because I'm pretty sure Stevenson's Rocket had a five-pole motor. Even though that's such a smaller loco, you would have thought with the extra space in here, a five-pole motor would have been easy to accommodate. But no, just a three-pole, which is strange. In terms of the DCC decoder, you get to it by undoing this screw at the base of the firebox, and the decoder socket is on a wire that you can pull out. Now, very annoyingly, the blanking plate is inaccessible because they've put some heat shrink tubing around it. So you'd actually have to, I don't know, get some snips and try and get that off in order to access the decoder socket. So I don't know if that was intentional. Maybe the factory were not aware that customers need access to this. Um, but either way, yeah, that's going to be annoying, isn't it? But there's a next generation 18 pin decoder socket there, which is quite handy. And then in terms of the gauge, yeah, it's Hornby. They've done a good job with this. 14.3 mil to 14.4 mil back to back on each axle, including the non-driven ones and the tender wheels. So that is absolutely perfect. So overall, for such a small loco, the mechanism is okay. One or two strange design choices, slightly disappointed in the three-pole motor, but overall, definitely no major cause for complaint. So with that, let me show you what happened during the performance test. So this will be a complete first for me. I've not looked at any other review material, and there was no video from Hornby showing a sample running or anything, so truly this will be the first time I've ever seen a Hornby Lion running. So... Moment of truth, let's find out, does this loco work? Forwards direction, let's give it some power. I am really looking forward to this, folks. Okay, here we go. Oh, <laughs> it just kind of started out of nowhere. But yes, it works. And this is 50% speed. Yeah, I've got to say, it seems pretty good and smooth, doesn't it, actually? Yeah, the motion looks pretty good from the outside and it looks as though all of the wheels are turning around. I suppose that is the one advantage of having a slightly heavy tender, and that is that despite having pickups, the wheels are still gonna turn. So maybe that's why they did it, I don't know. Uh, let's see how this three-pole motor crawls then. I'm gonna ease this up gently, bearing in mind it hasn't run in yet. It will get 30 minutes in each direction before I cast a final judgment, but I'm just turning it up gently. <laughs> Okay, that was it, and actually it's doing that completely all of the time. Um, it's very odd actually, it just kind of kicks in. 
<laughs> Can I slow down? Not really. Okay. So that's odd. Yeah. Uh, but I think what it needs to do is run in. Yeah, I think that's the only thing to do for it. So let's go for forwards. Let's go for 50% speed and let's see how it gets on around my track. Oh, I've got to say, folks, it does look awesome. And at the higher speeds like this, it seems to be running absolutely perfectly. It's a small low coat with a small wheelbase, so I wasn't expecting to see any issues around the second radius, but it is reassuring to see it handle them very, very easily, as it did. So that's awesome. Not dreadfully impressed by the slow speed. Obviously, slow should be the forte of these engines because, you know, 40 miles an hour was the absolute maximum. They would have been probably quite a bit slower than that most of the time. So I am hoping to see an improvement in the slow speed crawl. Hopefully this will get better as it runs in. And I think for now we'll just have to let it do so. I will come back to you in just a moment. I'll put some coaches on and we'll watch this gorgeous, gorgeous loco hauling some rolling stock. Okay folks, see you shortly. There we go then folks, that is running in complete. And that went without any issues at all. The Loco is stable on the track, never derailed, never had any issue with the rear non-driven wheels, uh, never cut out either, so the pickups are all making contact. How does the torque seem? Well, it's not a heavy Loco, but if I put my finger there, turn it up to 50, yeah, it's got torque to spare. Uh, in fact, I reckon the Loco could have been a little bit heavier than it is and still been absolutely fine. I would say that it's a little bit speedy though. Let me show you 50% speed of run past. I think it's maybe a bit quicker than it was before. But yeah, for a loco with a top speed of 40, let me show you it at high maximum speed. I would have said they could have afforded to gear this down a little bit and still, you know, had it realistic at the top speed because the crawl was not fantastic to start with. Uh, let's see if it's any better now. I'm going to ease it up. Obviously, your mileage may vary on different controllers. I'm on a Gauge Master controller with no feedback at the moment. And again, that's the slowest I can get it to start at. And once it kicks in, I should be able to slow it down a little bit beyond that. But not easily. Kind of like that. That's about the slowest I can get it to go. Nope, it's just stopped there. Let's try again. So yeah. Oh, it just makes you wonder what a five pole motor might have been able to achieve with this because that's not a great crawl and uh, I do think even my old copper knob loco was better at performance than this and you know that was a homemade 3d printed job and uh, I think the loco was about the same size as this so yeah that's a pity isn't it the performance is the weakness here. However, the pulling power isn't terrible. It came in at 0.06 newtons of tractive effort, uh, which again is less than my old copper knob, even though mine was completely 3D printed. So again, I think this could have been heavier and better than that, but that should be enough for this to haul around eight coaches on straight and level track. Bear in mind on gradients, it's gonna be significantly less than that. So to really test this, I've set up five of my yellow Stevenson's Rocket slash Lion coaches and also the third class coach at the back there. So we've got six coaches. I think if this can haul these with ease up Gordon's Hill, then the pulling power, I would say, is adequate. Now, I haven't gone into detail with these coaches. Here is a close-up of one of them right now. Again, if these are something you're interested in, then please check out my previous reviews. I have gone into some detail with these. But for now, let's go and couple up to them. Let's see what happens. Here we go. <laughs> it's going to be awkward, this, isn't it? I think there's going to be a bit of a collision. Okay, let's try and do this smoothly. Oh, that was, wasn't bad actually. Yeah, that worked out fairly well, didn't it? Coupling, of course, requires intervention from the hand of God, or as we see today, the tweezers of God, which is a very strange phenomenon, but it's happening today. Can I do it? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I think so. So yeah, fiddly, I think the Acura scale system is certainly more user friendly. But then again, once coupled, these are quite a bit better because the chains are rigid and they prevent the different rolling stock from getting too close to one another. And it prevents buffer lock, which is quite handy. Right, let's give this a try. Here we go. Let's attempt a steady acceleration, which is not that easy. Yeah, not a smooth start, unfortunately. Okay, here we go. Let's go up to around 40, I think. 
Okay, well at the moment it seems to be hauling those okay, doesn't it? So we'll catch up with that in just a moment. On the middle line we have Stevenson's Rocket, who has been left without very much rolling stock of her own. So she's just got the one third class blue coach there. And for more early goodness I've got the LMYR Pug with some children wagons. And obviously the Pug doesn't have NEM couplings, or a NEM pocket in fact, uh, but it does have a metal hook on the tension lock, so I was able to couple the shoulders. Anyway, let's catch up with Lion, let's see how she's getting on. Okay, here she comes, new Hornby Lion, with what I think is quite a good rake of coaches here, double the number in fact that she actually comes with in the pack, so if she can do this, I think I'll be quite impressed. By the way, the Rocket definitely wouldn't be able to do this. Yeah not even struggling. So, I mean, this Loco's not a powerhouse. If you couple it up to eight Mark 1s, good luck doing that. Um, no, it's not going to have it, obviously. But I think for anything half prototypical on a reasonably flat layout, this Loco is not going to struggle too much. And in terms of torque, the mechanism's got plenty of that. So, yeah, I'm really, really impressed with this. Objectively, I think it is a good, if not perfect, model. But subjectively, in my opinion, I think it's absolutely marvellous. Um, maybe the score won't reflect how much I love this, because there I do have to be objective. But in my opinion, this is just such a cool loco. It has been manufactured to a high standard, which hasn't been the case with Hornby quite often over the last couple of years. But this loco shows a real improvement in that area. So did the 9F that I looked at last time, but I had performance issues with that. Here, there are no performance issues. This Loco is running beautifully. Yes, it's not great at the slow speed. That's definitely one of the downsides of this Loco, but at the high speeds with a load, once it gets going, it's absolutely phenomenal. It's so beautifully smooth. The motion is great. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. What an incredible Loco. And it just shows that Hornby is capable of producing a quality model. And the Loco alone, 150 quid RRP. What I would really love would be to see Hornby release the Loco on its own, in its own box, without any of the coaches, at 150 quid RRP, maybe discounted 10% at the retailers, which would make it around 135. That would be a really good value model. £135 for a quality model with an extremely good level of detail. Not 100% accurate in every area, but I think good enough for most modelers. And it's era one as well, which everybody seems to love at the moment. Yeah, I think this is, I think this is really, really good. I love it. I absolutely love it. Let's have some ratings then for the brand new Hornby Lion train pack. The level of detail I've given four and a half star. Now, this is largely because I'm not massively interested in absolute accuracy. I think if you were, then you might want to score this loco lower. But for me, it's very, very close to a five. The finish is fantastic. The precision with which the decoration has been applied is awesome. I really do like the wood effect. I think that looks good. For me, the colors aren't too bad. It doesn't look as oversaturated as it did online, which is a relief. The detail is fantastic. We've got real chains, very intricate cab detail, loads and loads of detail, even motion between the frames underneath. Yeah, the detail is just fantastic. I do just wish the colour of the wheels matched the colour of the loco. That's a little bit disappointing. And it doesn't have anything really flashy such as lights or anything like that, but I think for the loco size, that's not a big deal. So 4.5, very, very good. For me, the performance is just a three star though. Now at the high speeds, it's incredibly smooth and reliable, really, really good performer. At the low end though, it's not so good. In fact, it can't crawl. It just kind of kicks in at a higher speed. And I think at 50 on the controller, it does look a little bit fast to the point where if you turn it right up to 100 on the controller, for me, that looks faster than the real thing would have been able to go. So if only they'd have geared it down a little bit, it might have been a better crawler and a little bit more realistic. But overall, the performance isn't terrible. It's just kind of middle of the road. The pulling power, again, for the size of the Loco isn't too bad. 0 0.06 Newtons. That's around eight coaches on straight and level track. Bear in mind, though, even my 3D printed copper knob locomotive 
was more powerful than that and that's about the same size so it is a shame that this loco doesn't have a little bit more metal on board so that it's a bit more powerful the mechanism for me is a four star because despite being such a small locomotive the quality of the mechanism is still really high so we've got proper bearings on the driving wheels and even the non-driving wheels so that's awesome pickups on basically all wheels of the model except for two so that's not too bad that includes the tender decent dcc access no major disassembly required and the speaker is pre-fitted in the tender too so there's no need to disassemble that uh, yeah it's just the three pole motor that lets this down i think a five pole would be better at the low end and it should have been possible because of course stevenson's rocket had one but still not a bad mechanism by any stretch and similarly the quality is really high the quality of the livery is high, absolutely fantastic. There's quite a lot of metalwork, yes, in the tender and in the die-cast chassis of the Loco, but also in the detailing, such as the whistle, the chimney and the handrails. It really does make a difference. Seeing metal parts which have real metal finishes on them, like some of these do, is a real breath of fresh air. And the build quality is really high as well. Loads of fragile separately fitted parts, but they've all been applied really nicely and I didn't even see any glue spilt on this one. So yeah, really, really good. I wish the Loco had more die cast, particularly on the boiler and firebox area because it could do with the extra weight, but this is not a major concern, four star. So value for money, the RRP is £239.99 for the entire pack, which includes the Loco and three coaches. And I bought mine for £215.99 from the model centre. And I've given this four star. Now, I think the Loco at £150 is actually pretty decent value. Yeah, I mean, yes, it's a lot of money, but this is a detailed model and quite a complex one. No issue with the value at all there. The coaches though, as I said in my previous reviews, which you're welcome to check out, these are very small, they're very light, very plasticky, reasonably detailed, but not excessively so. For £89.99 RRP, I think these are poorer value. Overall though, I think it all balances out quite nicely and I've given it four star. In this case from Hornby, you do get what you pay for. You've paid a lot of money and what you get is quality. And that's all you can ask for, isn't it? So four star. Overall then, that is 7.70 out of 10. That's a pretty good score, actually. Overall, no major complaints here. Into the logbook we go, and that is 17th place above the new Hornby A1 and below the Hornby 28XX. Well done, Hornby. This was just the job. Really good quality loco, runs pretty well too, and not overly expensive. Really, really good. So I have enjoyed this more than I've enjoyed a review in a long time because this one is the full package, isn't it? It does perform well, not absolutely incredibly, but well, and it looks stunning, it really does. And era one, era two, that sort of time, they are my favorite locos. And to see one produced to this quality standard is really, really exciting to me. So nice work, Hornby. Still looking forward to Rapidos. I think there is every reason to expect theirs will be better in terms of accuracy and there is room for improvement in the performance as well. Uh, so hopefully Rapido will make good on their Lion. But in the meantime, while we're waiting for that, this is perfectly serviceable and it is cheaper than Rapido's. So in the meantime, this is a perfectly good substitute. So thank you so much for watching, folks. Do check out my Stevenson's Rocket review if you'd like to see more on the coaches. But for now, I will leave it there. Thank you very much for watching once again, and I'll catch you very soon. All right. Cheers, folks. Take care.